Welcome to Postcast tonight as the Utah Jazz defeat the Washington Wizards. Jazz have won 8 of 10. They have now won four in a row, and they are now four games above 500 for the first time all year. They move to 14 and 4 at home. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, and really, we're pretty fabulous for most of the night. Wizards made a run at the Jazz, and the Jazz kind of ran back away from them. The game uh, not near, not as close as the final score, though the Wizards gave you a few moments of doubt. Overall, though, Ron, what's your perspective on this one? Well, uh, the Wizards made the Jazz concentrate on, on, on winning this basketball game. They just didn't let them just run through the motions and, and, um, and win it. You know, uh, that's an NBA team. That should not happen. You should... You, and so, uh, you know, the Jazz ended up having to fight and, and win the ball game in, in the fourth quarter. But the big thing here is that the Jazz finding ways to win it uh, and, and going back and look at the film and say, well, we did this right and we did, you know, this wrong. The team looks really different. I mean, the rest has obviously been nice to them. Some of the opponents aren't as good. That's certainly part of it. But I, actually, you go back to the two losses of the Clippers game. I, I kind of look at those as the turning points where the team began to look different then. Mm-hmm. But the ball is moving. The defensive rotations are good. Sidney Lowe singled out Al Jefferson at halftime tonight as a guy who was making fabulous defensive rotations that were a key to the game. That's just not something that people said about Al Jefferson earlier. Well, and it's amazing you, you bring that up because this morning a shoot-around, they were defending on how to defend uh, John Wall or Price, free throw line extended, and how Jefferson was going to have to help out. And, and immediately he says, well, I'm going to have to hustle out here but look at the ground I have to cover to get back to my man. And coach said, you can do it. He said, okay, I'll do it. You know, that, that type of thing. But the point I'm making is that just recognizing what needs to be done and, not, uh, and, and, and pointing it out, you know, rather than just not just um, letting it go by the wayside, no one brings it up. And the other thing that might be nice for this team is, you know, is that Cantor and Favors are both playing pretty well. I mean, Favors played 21 minutes tonight. Cantor had a good stretch in 11 minutes. And so, you know, you're asking Al to do a lot of work, but you're asking him to do it for 33 minutes instead of 38. You're asking Millsap tonight, 32 minutes for Millsap tonight, 16 points, 15 rebounds, 12 defensive boards, and holding Nene to 3 of 14. I mean, that is a yeoman's amount of work, but if you ask him to do it for 31 minutes, it's a lot easier to do that than for 35 or 38. And, and so what do you tell your, your, your team, your players? You know, bust your butt while you're out there. You know, bust your butt while you're out there, and, and, uh, and things will work out for you. And, and this team now, I, I think, understands what they need to do. I, I think they've accepted their roles, and winning solves a lot of problems. Well, let's go to what you just said, because both you and Thurl in the broadcast tonight talked about the accepting of the roles. Mm-hmm. What are you seeing there out of this team in regards to accepting of the roles that maybe we didn't have established earlier? Well, the only time we see a lot of one-on-one basketball or someone holding the basketball is Al Jefferson and Derek Favors. Those are your post-up players. You know, even Cantor, you know, he, he doesn't play a lot, but usually they're, they're running the floor and, and they're executing their offense. So, Guys tells me that the guys now are accepting their roles by moving the basketball, getting it to the right to the right person, and that's 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 the key. I mean, I don't I haven't heard anyone griping about playing time. You remember maybe a month ago there was a lot of talk about you know players being a little upset because they weren't getting the playing time that they they thought they should have. Uh, the rotation wasn't solid or wasn't uh, uh, consistent, and players were upset with that. Now. Things have started to change a bit. They, well, winning, winning cures a lot of winning air. cures a lot of those problems. Yeah. So that makes things a lot better when you win ball games. Uh, the Jazz tonight. Uh, Jamal Tinsley's box score is 11 points, five rebounds, six assists tonight. 35 minutes. They really relied on him. This team lost Mo Williams, and it seemed like that was a death sentence, Ron. It has been anything but. There was this guy that wrote this article at Locked on Jazz about how the Jazz might actually prosper. Statistically, that the numbers showed that the Jazz would prosper without Mo Williams. They're actually doing it. I I, I wrote the article. The numbers were there. I'm not saying I believed them, but I'm beginning to believe them. Well, again, the the point guard position by committee, and and obviously both of these guys give you something different uh, with Tinsley and, and Watson. 
But Tinsley is your point guard. He, he, is, uh, he makes a lot of things happen. He, he, he's, he had five rebounds tonight. I mean, that's what you want to have out of, out of, out of guards and, and the, for the most part, get engaged in the, into the ball game to where they're playing everywhere. I mean, they're doing everything that you need them to do out there on the floor. So I was wondering about this, Dave, David, during the course of the basketball game. I didn't bring it up, but what is the Jazz record uh, without um, Mo Williams? Uh, it's pretty good. You'll, you'll have to look that up. I have it. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's really good. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> I think we were below 500 when we went to Orlando, if yeah. I remember correctly. Which is, you know, what it really what really actually jumps out uh, if you look back at it, Ron, in that regard, is that they they lose the Orlando game, but they didn't. I mean, they kind of knew they didn't get a chance to collect themselves and and figure out who they were yet, right? Mm-hmm. And right. they came back and had uh, when they lost the Orlando game, the Jazz went to 15 and 14. They come back and play the Warriors game where I'm not sure they had time yet to really work. If you remember, that was the 26. They didn't practice in between those two times. Right. And they lose the Warriors game, and so they drop the 15 and 15, and then it's since then that the Jazz have put together an 8-4 and four run with two losses to Clippers. But if you really look back at it, it's that, it, that's when this team started playing better. They got a few practice days with Jamal, and they figured it out, and for whatever reason, that seems to have made this team play a lot better basketball uh, than it did, than it has earlier, and Jamal has done the work. And maybe what's most important is the work of Jefferson and Millsap in favors as big men defending the pick and roll. Kyrie Irving and John Wall both came in capable point guards of lighting you up. Neither of them did it. The Jazz have not been torched by the opposing point guard very often in the stretch without Mo. And frankly, the Jazz were being torched by opposing point guards at alarming rates the last few years. And if, if you want to look a little deeper into that, uh... And, and look at the players that were struggling at the beginning of the year. And, and we'll just use Paul Millsap in particular. You know, I, I think right now he's probably playing as well as he's played all season long. Rebounding, uh, he struggled with his perimeter jump shot. And I thought that really hurt him early in the year. Now he's starting to make that shot. Uh, he's getting a little more aggressive on, on the glass. And, and so his game is starting to come around. That's huge for the success of this team. Well, Tyrone Corbin has done a masterful job of massaging the – Various issues are going on around Paul Millsap and this team and has been able to get Paul back in. He was the star of the night. 16 points, 15 rebounds, but most importantly, holding Nene to 3 of 14 shooting. Uh, And one of the few times he's guarded him, Nene has had most of his success, frankly, being guarded by Al Jefferson uh, in Denver. But the matchup was different tonight with Okafer on Jefferson, or at least the Jazz made it different. Nice work again by the coaching staff there. Jazz win it tonight. They've won 8 of 10. They've won 4 in a row. They are 4 games over 500. And they are as hot as any team in the Western Conference. We head to L.A. on Friday. Ron and I will be with you with a home game Saturday against Indiana. Tickets are available at utahjazz.com.